Well, it looks like the Toehill brothers are off as directors in the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot. I did a video a few weeks back about it, but now all of that has changed. Let's discuss. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, a part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm M.L. Miller. I just wanted to do a quick video update on the latest attempts to reboot the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. While Fede Alvarez is still producing the film, it looks like the Toehill brothers, the Irish directors who were behind the excellent drama thriller The Dig, have left the project one week into shooting due to the old creative differences chestnut. While there's been no official word as to why the Toehills have been ousted, it seems the producers might not have been digging what the brothers were delivering, and before they got too far into production, the decision was made to cut ties with them. This isn't a perfect scenario, but if there were problems, whether it be the directors having issues with the movie, or the producers having issues with the directors, it is a good thing that the shakeup happened earlier in the film rather than later, I guess. Now, I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, Maybe it'll be a bullet dodged, like when Doug Ray Scott had to bow out of the role of Wolverine for X-Men, and Hugh Jackman stepped in at the last minute. Either way, things are a-changing on this Texas Chainsaw Massacre set, as David Blue Garcia was immediately rushed in to replace the directors. Garcia is a relative newcomer, but did garner some buzz for a film he did called Tejano, a low-budget crime thriller set at the Texas-Mexican border. As with the Toehills, I plan on doing a follow-up to this video soon reviewing Tejano and providing my thoughts on how I think Garcia will handle the project. Garcia is based in Austin, Texas, and while that doesn't necessarily make him qualified for the job of directing this film, which is supposed to revitalize the franchise, at least he knows the Texas area. That said, the film is being made in Bulgaria. Yes, you heard me right, Bulgaria. Now, I've never been there. But something tells me that there's going to have to be a hell of a lot of set dressing to make it look like rural Texas convincingly. I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but things don't exactly look groovy on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre front. Still, maybe Garcia and Alvarez will be able to capture that special something that Hooper got in the original. My suggestion is to put the cast and crew through the same ungodly conditions as Hooper did in the original, so as to try to grab that same feeling. Up the temperature and fill the studio with the smell of rotting animal carcasses, and you'll see some genuinely harrowing performances, I guarantee. If they're trying to make this a direct sequel, maybe they'll put that space between chain and saw like the original did. Who knows? The plot involves a pair of gals traveling through Texas to visit their grandfather's grave. One of them is wheelchair-bound, which is a callback to Franklin from the original, this one is supposed to be directly tied to Toby Hooper's original with Leatherface aging in real time and being a 60-year-old. While some are complaining about this, 60 is the new 50 these days, and besides that, who knows what the effects of a human meat diet has on the metabolism. Maybe Leatherface's strict diet of long pig has given him the strength and vitality of 10 psychomaniac cannibal killers. Going back to the original most likely is not due to the disrespect for the series as much as it is about the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Since the property has been bought and sold to many production companies through the years, it's hard to make a consistent story that embraces some of the cooler family members who showed up later in the series, like fan favorite Chop Top, and even some of my more obscure favorites like Tex, Tink, and Alfredo from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Maybe one of these days we will have some company buy all of the rights to the series and have a giant family reunion, but it's doubtful. I'm just hoping we get a little bit of family showing up in this new installment. Family is an important theme to the entire Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, you know. It looks to be Leatherface is going to be taken care of by an elderly woman who may or may not be kin. Hopefully more of the Chainsaw family will be featured as well. It also looks like there's been some casting announcement for the film. No news on who is playing Leatherface, but the cast is comprised of Elsie Fisher, who starred in 8th grade, didn't see it, Sarah Yarkin, who was the chirpy, short-haired brunette in Happy Death Day to You, and most likely our wheelchair-bound gal, 
Jacob Lattimore from Maze Runner, didn't see it, and Mo Dunford from Vikings, and more importantly, he was excellent in The Dig, which was directed by the Towhills. Dunford is an awesome actor, and I could either see him playing one of the Sawyer clan or one of the soon-to-be victims. I'm hoping for the former, since he played grungy really well in The Dig. So look for some fresh young faces for Leatherface to wear in this one. As more news drops about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and any of the other slasher films in the works, I'll be sure to post updates. What do you guys think of this developing news? Let me know down below in the comments section. That'll be it for today. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share the video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. Don't forget about the new trade paperback for my comic book horror series, Grave Trancers, which will be out in finer comic stores on September 2nd. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. Stuck inside your reality You're doomed Oh, you're doomed You're doomed Yeah.